Alright guys, Monk here, and um, I've got a nice tutorial here. This is um, going to be a pretty well received one, I'm guessing, because this is how to uh, create a nice professional intro using techniques I use myself when I'm creating intros for you guys. So I'm going to take you through step by step. Um, this is probably going to be a three part, ep three part um, tutorial. This part we're going to be in Cinema 4D. The next part we're going to be in, be in After Effects. And then the part after that we're going to be um, going into Sony Vegas and adding a few little finishing touches to it. Um, as well as, you know, adding more things to it. Like sound effects and things like that. I'm also going to be giving you uh, free sound effects yourself. Um, for you to download yourself, free of charge and everything like that. I use the exact things what I use, so uh, am I recording my voice? Yes I am. Right, we're in a minute in so we need to get going because it's going to be a long one. That's what she said. Right. Let's go. Right, to uh, start off with, we're obviously going to need some text. Now, if you're in Cinema 4DR12, you're just going to go to MoGraph, MoText. If not, you're going to go to MoGraph and then Text Object. Uh, I like to sort of explain myself um, between, you know, the Cinema 4DR12 now and 11.5, just in case you've got either one. So uh, then we're just going to enter our text. Um, we're just going to put a tutorial for now. And obviously we're going to want to pick a, pick a nice font. Um, if you want to get some good fonts, go to dafont.com. Uh, I know a lot of people know about it already. It's just, you know, so you guys know about it, just in case you didn't know, even though a lot of people do. Uh, this is the most annoying part of making an intro, I find. To try and find a font, what would because, um, you know, if you get something that looks crap, then the whole intro is ruined. And you know, especially when you're doing a tutorial and you're having to find an, a decent font. But yeah, I just like to say also thanks to uh, Rocket Ross UK. Uh, he sent quite a few people over to my channel, which is you know really nice. I made him a background. Um, so if you want to go check that out, that will be uh, that will be great. Oh my God. Just find a decent font. I mean, this is this is probably. Uh, we'll try this one. Whoops! No, 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 no. Yep. We'll try this one. Hmm. Let's have a look. Yeah, that'll do for now. Like it. But I'm just gonna pick a basic. It doesn't matter. This is only uh, a tutorial. It's not creating anything special. So um I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll we'll just go for Bank Gothic. Even though it's pretty overused and stuff. Oh well, it looks pretty crap, but you know this is not to to look good, it's to teach you guys. So you can put the depth up a little bit. Uh, I like to put it around fifty. Uh, you know, you can do whatever you want. And then go over to caps, uh, add a fillet cap. Uh, to the front, you can add one to the back if you want, but I can't be asked <laughs> at the moment. So if we just put the steps, say two, and the radius for around three, or maybe a bit more, should we say five? Let's see how it looks. Yeah, we'll say five. Um, so that looks pretty decent. These materials, I mean, <laughs> we'll make a new one because you know, otherwise you guys are not going to get the whole uh, the whole tutorial because you have the materials. So um. Right, we're going to make this intro um, a nice red. So if we just put that down there like that. Oh crap, I've done that in reflection, sorry. Um, let's just. I always do this when I've been working on a project. Right, let's get a nice little red. Red there. And if you want to make it. Take off specular. If you want to make it nice and shiny, uh, put some reflection on. Change the texture to Fresnel. Put the brightness down to around 9 and the mix strength down to around 15, 16. And just drag that onto your text. Now, that itself looks pretty crap. This is where, um, this is sort of the part of the tutorial which is a bit iffy. If you have Grayscale Gorilla's HDR I Like It Pro, then you can use the ring light and the overhead softbox. If not, you're going to have to do this. Um, I'm going to use the softbox and everything like that. But I'm just going to quickly show you what you can do if you don't have that. Get a plane, and as you can see, it's nice and uh, whatever there. And if you want, just 
zoom out a little bit. Move up a bit. Right, and then bring it up pretty far. And then you want to make a... Where am I? What am I going in there for? You want to make a cloner object. Drag the plane into the cloner object. And as you can see now, it's nothing happened unless you click on here. Then you can alter it. But just go on to cloner and bring it up. And change the mode to grid array. Now that looks a bit weird. Why would you want it on that? But as you can see now, if we just put that Yes, one down three. Is it this one? Yes, it's that one one on one. Um Alright, now if we if we just pull the size up like that on each side. Make sure the middle one's on one. So three, five, one. Um you know you can pull down or whatever. Right, like that. And then if you just drag it really far up. And then you want to uh, make a new material down here. Uh, double click on that. Uh, check luminance pillar and don't drag it onto the plane just drag it over onto the clone object that'll go onto all of them and then if you if you go down to your to your text and zoom in you'll see you get the nice reflections on the top but it's not obviously not the same as um doing the like it pro but you know you you uh you're obviously not going to get that effect because that, that costs quite a bit. Obviously there are other means of getting it, but we're not going to go into that today. Um, if you do want to do want to have more info, you can always PM me. Uh, I'd be happy to uh, assist you. So anyway, when, once we've imported that, you can see that looks a lot, a lot better. Um, it looks a lot cleaner, a lot more professional, and it just looks just a lot better. So you've got the text now. I didn't want to spend too much, too long on that, really. But we've we've had to. So now we're going to go on to MoGraph. Select the uh, Mo text over here. Now go on to MoGraph, and we're going to have a. I'm going to go through a few different ones. If you go on Effector and go on the Random Effector, this is the first way I'm going to show you. You can alter things like this. So you can play with these values. Just put them up or down to what you like like that make sure that most of the look well depending on the effect you want I like to get all of the letters to go off screen then if you go down here and put your keyframe to say 200 do whatever you want however long you want the thing to be press hold control and actually no we're gonna add a rotation as well uh, on the rotation I like to do 300 200 100 and now you wanna hold control down and click while still holding control all of these circles by the side that adds a keyframe now if you go to say 60 which is two seconds you want to reset these so zero them all out right and now you'll notice they go yellow so just do the same hold control and click them this adds a keyframe so now if we go to the beginning and press play yeah there yeah right Sorry, my uh, Camtasia is making my uh, Cinema 4D lag a little bit, but yeah, you can see there. That's how I get. That's how we get the text to come in in a nice uh, in a nice way. You know, it looks better than it just all coming in at the same time. So uh, yeah, that's that's one way to do it. The second way to do it is if we just delete that, click on the text again. You can go on to MoGraph Effector and Step Effector. Where is it? Step. And you'll notice that your thing goes absolutely retarded. Uh, go on Parameter. Uncheck Scale because that's what's made it go weird. And put rotation, the uh, position even. And you just need to play around with it. I think it's the Y value. Right, the Y value maybe want to put up or down a little bit. I like to maybe put it up like that. And then the Z value you want to bring to the minus so that it's sort of coming in. Out like that. Bring it all out. Then go on rotation. After you see the difference. Um, and 
just play around with these dials until you see something that you're happy with. I'm pretty happy with that. Again, do the same things we did before. Control click on all of these circles. And go to around frame 60. Zero them all out. And control click again. Now I'd like this video to get like quite a few likes because this is going to be a bitch to upload because it's pretty long as you can see so if you get some me some uh, a nice amount of likes and favor and things like that it'd be really appreciated guys thanks so here we can see that the text sort of zooms in like that so it's again it's per it's personal preference what you like if you prefer the random effector then obviously you can um you can use the random effector um but if you prefer the step effector, we'll use the step effector. We'll use the step effector for now because of why I'm going to have to keep changing it around. So, uh, yeah. So we've got that in. We can uh, sort of just put the camera to a nice position. And we're going to add a camera. So if we just go over here and... Why am I in the light section? Oh, yeah, it is in the light section. I haven't used Cinema 4D in ages. Right, so if we just add a camera in... And as you can see, well, actually you can't see, but there's a black little box there. Um, if you click that, it goes white. That means that's your active camera through the camera. If it, if you haven't done that, you're not viewing through the camera. It's not going to make any effect. So I like to add um, a little shake on the camera now and again. So if you right-click on the camera and go to Cinema 4D tags and go down to Vibrate. Now, Enable Position is the one that you want to be going on. Put the frequency at 1. I don't want to doing it in V. Around 50, um, maybe 30, and 60, something like that. Just a few random values. And if we now go through, we can see the camera is shaking a little bit, and it just it just adds that little nice uh, something else. Just rather than it being all boring, because um, it is just boring watching the text come in, just all uniform and uh, things like that. So it's always it's always nice to. Uh, add something else so yeah so let's just say we're happy with that I mean it's not too advanced I'm not gonna go into all the um, other things what I could do um, I, I might make an advanced intro tutorial if you want one you know one where I uh, do something like the current intro what I've got at the moment you know where I make shapes come in and um, put a backdrop to it and things like that um, I'll do that if I get some good feedback but if it's if you don't like this sort of thing then there's no point in me doing it so anyway, um, once we've done this, uh, 13 minutes, right, I'm going to render this out now and I'm going to uh, upload this and basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to upload it and then I'm going to make part two. Um, part two is going to be in After Effects, so when I, uh, when I return, well, in the next episode, this is going to be episode one, episode two will be in uh, After Effects and we're going to add a few flares, we're going to add um, maybe a time code, something like that. Um, just basically affect what I think makes the video look nicer. Um, and then, depending on how long that takes up of the tutorial, we're going to go into either in that episode, Sony Vegas, and add some sound effects and other effects from Sony Vegas. And um, if we don't, if that After Effects episode takes up a long time, then what we're going to do is we're going to do a Sony Vegas episode in um, in another episode. And after this intro intro tutorial, after episode three, um, I might start doing a background tutorial. Um, so if you want that, just comment below. I'd be happy to do it. Editing as well. I'm getting into so something like that. Just uh, comment below. Just read your feedback. It really does help my channel. Um, and you know, it's always nice to hear from you guys to know you're not you know just on videos and clicking off and. Yeah, I like it when you like the videos and comment to me. Cause it's always nice to read what you guys think. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching and make sure to comment, rate, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And um, peace.